Our scripture reading is from the Acts chapter 4, uh, verses 5 through 12. The next day, the rulers and the elders, the teachers of the law, met in Jerusalem. And as the high priest was there, and so were Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and other of the high priest family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel. It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Thanks be to God. In 2008, the Pew Forum on Religion and Public Life published a major study on religious affiliations, beliefs, and practices in the United States. One of the significant findings was that 70% of all Americans believe that many religions can lead to eternal life, including 65% of all self-identifying Christians. Perhaps the most surprising finding was that 57% of evangelical Christians said they believe Many religions can lead to eternal life in conflict with traditional biblical teaching. Many people, including growing numbers of Christians, have criticized Christianity and believe in Jesus Christ as being too narrow-minded and intolerant because we preach that Jesus is the only way to salvation. The point to the numerous other religions of the world today and say, how can Jesus be the only way to salvation? Don't all religions lead to God? You know, these two questions remind me of a recent uh, phone conversation with one of our uh, church members. He's not officially joined our church, but he has and attended our church uh, a number of times, so I don't know how many times. And he explained to me why he decided to leave the church. Not this church, I mean, not this particular church, Fairfield Glade United Methodist Church. He decided not to come back to church, any church anymore. He said, I can't believe in Christianity because of the fact that Christianity proclaims that there's only one way to heaven. That is so mean. How about others who are not Christians? In a pluralistic world, why should we embrace multiple ways to salvation? Wow. How inclusive he is. What would you do in a conversation when someone raises the objection that he finds it repulsive? that Christians believe Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. If you say, and I say, I believe that there is salvation in no one else, God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. As, he, as uh, Paul, uh, Peter proclaimed to the rulers in Acts 4.12, the world and the 57% of evangelical Christians will tell you that you are a closed-minded, 
judgmental, and intolerant person. And I'm glad that I can tell you that I'm a close-minded, judgmental, and intolerant person. But it doesn't matter what the world and other Christians may say about you and me. Because the Bible tells us that Jesus is the only way to heaven, whether we like it or not. Our passage this morning is one of those passages that stress the exclusive nature of the gospel. The verse 12 says, There is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. Let me ask you directly. Do you believe that Jesus is really the, sa- Jesus is really the only way to God? I mean, we all say yes. I should close my <laughs> sermon and then we all go home now. One and only reason we should believe Jesus is the only way of salvation is because what the Bible says. And that's what Jesus claimed about himself. I want to give you a few examples in the Bible what Jesus said about himself, how he claimed about himself. Jesus didn't say, I am a way and a truth and a life. I am one way to come to the Father. He said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And Jesus also said, I tell you the truth. Those who listen to my message and believe in God who sent me have eternal life. They will never be condemned for their sins, but they have already passed from death to death into life. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. My Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in Him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son. Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Jesus also said, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live, even though they die, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. As the great British writer C.S. Lewis once pointed out, many are willing to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but not his unique claims to be God. In Lewis' memorable words, he responds, quote, That is the one thing we must not say. A man who was merely a man and said the sort of things Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would would either be a lunatic or on a level with a man who says he is a poached egg or, or else he would be the devil of hell. You must make your choice. Either this man was and is the Son of God or else a madman or something worse. You can shut up for fool. You can spit at him and kill him as a demon or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. So Jesus was either a madman or liar or myth or He really was and is the Son of God. Brothers and sisters, are you willing to die for madman or liar or myth? Are you willing to be persecuted for someone who is not the way to salvation, but a way to salvation? Not only did Jesus himself believe that he was the one He was the only way to God, being one with God the Father. Peter, in his sermon, with clear conviction, said, 
Jesus is the door of salvation. Jesus is the way to heaven. The only way you will enter into heaven is through Him. After the apostle Peter healed a man who had been lame from his birth, the Jewish religious leaders who sent Jesus to the cross could not leave them alone because they were sharing about the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. They even imprisoned Peter and John to try to stop the spread of the gospel. And the next day, they asked Peter and John and saying, by what power or what name did you do this? Peter replied to their questions in verse 10, It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. According to Peter, it was the name of Jesus Christ that brought the healing to this lame man. If Peter believed that Jesus was the one of ways to come to God, would he risk his own life to spread the gospel? In the past, when Jesus needed Peter the most, he denied his association with Jesus to a servant girl because he was afraid. What has changed him so drastically in our passage this morning, where his courage came from. Was it his willpower? Did he finally decide to stand up for Jesus? Did he finally wake up and realize what he had to do? Peter tells us this morning that it is neither. In our passage, when Peter was called in by the rulers and elders and the teachers of the law, he was bold and direct and confronted them. Even in the midst of persecution, Peter stood before the rulers without fear and confidently preached the gospel of Jesus Christ and his death and resurrection. What's the difference the change in Peter was not due to his natural boldness. It was the result of the power of the Christ Peter witnessed in Jesus' death and resurrection. And it was due to the power of the Holy Spirit. When Peter witnessed the power of the Christ and then experienced the power of the Holy Spirit, Peter could stand up for what he believed Without fear. And he boldly proclaimed, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Before the breakup of the Soviet Union, Christians were routinely persecuted for their faith by the communist regime. We have many inspiring stories of courageous Christians behind the Iron Curtain who were willing to die for their faith during this difficult period in the world history. One such story inv involves a house church in a city in the former Soviet Union. A small group of people, a small group of believers who gathered at a house church was afraid to carry the Bible. So they memorized large section of the New Testament and they recited scriptures to each other. Each week they would arrive at the house at different times to avoid the suspicious of KGB informers. On one particular Sunday, the church members were all safety, safely inside the building with the windows closed and the doors locked. They began the service by softly singing a hymn and praying. Suddenly, the door burst open and two soldiers armed with automatic weapons walked in. One shouted, all right, everyone up against the wall. 
If you wish to renounce your faith in Jesus Christ, you can live now. No harm will come to you. Two or three church members left, then another. This is your last chance, the other soldiers warned. Either you turn your back on this Jesus of yours or stay and suffer the consequences. Another member left. Two more covered their faces in shame and slipped out into the night. No one else moved. Parents with small children trembling beside them looked down reassuringly. They fully expected to be gone down on the spot or at the very least imprisoned. After a few moments of silence, the soldiers closed the door and looked back at the church members left standing against the wall. One of them said, Keep your hands up, but this time in praise to our Lord Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters. We too are Christians. We were sent to another house church several weeks ago to arrest a group of believers. But instead, we were converted. The other soldier added, We are sorry to have frightened those who left, but we have learned that unless people are willing to die for their faith, they cannot be fully trusted. What would you have done when the soldiers arrived? Would you have left or stayed, in, stayed to suffer the consequences. I can guarantee you that if, if you believe that Jesus is the only way to heaven, you would stay to suffer the consequences. You may, may not, I'm not sure, okay. But without conviction, I can really guarantee you this, without conviction that Jesus is the only way to salvation, you would leave the church to avoid the persecution. Let me ask you directly again. Are you saved? Jesus longs to save you. For he said, in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save the which is lost. But in, other, in order to be saved, you must believe that Jesus is the only way to salvation. Many people are trying to save themselves through doing good works, giving money to charity, living by the golden rule, keeping Ten Commandments, being baptized, or believing everything, believing every religion in the world. But the truth is, we are saved by God's grace, rebuilt in Jesus Christ, because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And if we believe in Him as your Savior, you will be saved. How many ways to God? The question was answered by someone who was who way you know who uh, someone who way smarter than us who loved others more than us and the 57% of evangelical Christians his name is Jesus Christ and he said to all of us salvation is found no one else for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. So, what do we do with this truth? Jesus commands us to believe this truth in our hearts. And He wants you to share it with those who need the true Savior in their life. Brothers and sisters, the world is waiting for us. 57 of evangelical Christians 
They are waiting for you to say that Jesus is the only way to heaven. So now, as we sing our last hymn, my hope is built on nothing less. In 368, I want you to put your trust in Jesus Christ and confess him that, Lord, you are the only way to salvation. I believe that I thank you that you are the only way so I can go to heaven and have eternity with you. So I invite you to stand and then let us sing our last hymn, My Hope is Built.